So today I'm going to try and replace the internals of this Amiga 500 power supply with one of these Meanwhile RT50B power supplies. And I hope this is going to fit in here because these power supplies, they're really odd because they have this number on the bottom that tells you what they are, the part number. But so this is a different Amiga power supply. And if we check the part number on this one, the one I'm going to modify, it says it's 312503-02, right? Now, if we look at this one, this one says it's 312503-2. So same part number, but immediately you can see that there is some differences here. Firstly, this one's got screw holes and this one doesn't. And this one has the power switch there and this one has it on the side. So they're using the same part number for things that are different. So it might be that it's the same power supply or it was the same power supply inside. This one's already been converted to have one of these in it. But actually the case is actually different. And this one's even got a date on it of 21st of the 3rd, 90. So that's the reason why I want to replace it with the Meanwhile, because even though this is measuring good, I think I'd just like a more modern power supply in there because I don't fancy the chances of this working for another 30 years. Not not fully anyway. This is a little odd. I was going I was gonna get the screwdriver on this to try and open it, but it doesn't have the screw holes, so I can only assume that this one's actually clipped together, whereas this one isn't. So is this got clips in it somewhere then? I mean, it's going to have to have clips, isn't it? Because how else would it go together? It's weird that they've clipped it. Is that trying to save you some money on screws or something? Maybe it's not clipped. How did you do this, Commodore? How did you get this to go together? I mean, I'm not feeling any clips in there. So what is holding this together? Right, give me a minute and I'll see if I can get, see if I work out how to get this open. So after five minutes of messing around with this, I don't think it is clipped. I think that these are actual covers that they've put over the screw holes and they've been glued in. I can actually see a little bit of glue on that one there. It's really hard to detect, but there, there is actually a bit of glue there. And I've tried prying these up and I can't get through them. So I think I'm gonna have to drill through these. Um, and I think that's going to reveal the screws. So this one does have the same screw mountings as the other one. They just put actual plastic inserts and glued them in over the screws. Right, let's get the drill on it. Okay, so I'm just going to use this little drill bit to like drill a small hole, then I'll drill a bigger one afterwards. Here we go. Let's hope this doesn't screw up. I'm using a wood drill bit. I'm assuming that's what I've got to use for plastic. I don't think anything else is more suitable. Well, that wasn't too hard. Right, so I've just drilled the little pilots and then I'll just drill the biggest hole I can in those now. Oh yeah, there is a screw under there. Looks like a flathead screw. Ah, there we go. So that's what it is. So it is a little like staked in thing. Yeah. So they've been kind of like glued in, I think, maybe. Ah, so maybe I can get that one out there. So we've got one of them out, but the other ones, there's not enough of them out to get the screw out, I think. Hmm, there's enough to get to the screw though. Maybe if I can undo the screw, it'll push the thing out now. So if I can undo that, or maybe I don't even need to get that. I'll just need to be able to get to the screw head. So that one's out. What is holding this in? Oh, there we go. So only one of those screws will actually come out. And the other ones are just gonna sit there. Oh, so it's even handily labeled down there. Oop. Let me write those down. See if we can get this board out. Oh, it's held in by the, it's held in here, by the transformer. Oh, oh there we go. It is out. So that's a working power supply, or it was. Get this ground terminal off. So 
So I'll just attempt to desolder this. Right, that's my main switch. I'm going to need that. I'm desoldering these just because there's not much cable on it. So I want to keep as much as I can. Let's desolder these. This uh, Amiga side as well. Oh, that old solder smell. That's the bit we don't need anymore. And here we go. We're just left with the stuff we need. That's oh, in there like that. And we've got our power switch. Cool. And then the power supply sits in here. This somehow has to go in here and we have to make sure we can get the lid on. So I might just try screwing that on now. Which is difficult actually with these screws like this. I'm going to see if I can get these screws out because these captive screws are quite annoying. Okay, so that, that was actually quite a bit of work getting those screws out of there. It turns out the way to do it in the end was, because the screws were jammed in like that, I actually put this block of wood on top and I actually hammered it from above. You can see the marks where the screw went in there. And I hammered it so, and eventually the, this part underneath popped out with the screw and that's what got these out. So I had actually drilled quite a bit of it out first but that seemed like the best way to do it. I did have to actually apply quite a bit of force to do that. I'm not sure if they were actually glued. They probably were, they were very tough to get out. And now I can actually finally have a go at putting this in here. So it can go either way around, I suppose, whichever's the more convenient. But let's just check that this case will close with this on top. And the answer is probably no by the looks of it. Oh no, there's a thing there. Yeah, there's some kind of plastic thing there that's stopping it. Otherwise that would go in. Oh, it's just not quite big enough. But actually, if I do just file it off a bit, that will actually hold it in place quite nicely. It only needs a little bit of filing off that. So, let me get a file. This is getting messy. Well, there's a lot of heavy tools coming out today. This has gone slightly differently than I thought it was going to. Let's try this little file to start with. Maybe that'll do it. This may take some time. Hmm. Right, let's try that. So it'll probably go in this way. It's rock, rocking about a bit, but is that going to close? Yeah. Oh, and that actually holds in quite nicely. That's quite good. So there we go, so it fits inside. Finally, after all this mess, it fits. And I think this, these plastic parts are just gonna hold it in place. So that should be pretty good. All the terminals are here, so the mains end comes in here and the switch is here. I'd rather have all this bit over here and I'll, I'll wire extra bits onto here and I'll extend these over um, so that they fit that way. So I think these might be long enough to, oh, they're not quite actually. The earth is long enough to get there. Oh, but actually this switch will have to be wired on there. And then that'll have to go to that. Let me Let's just undo these clips on this. So yeah, the main switch is gonna have to be extended. Um, it'll just be the neutral wire that has to be extended over to get to there. So it's just not quite long enough. So I'll have to extend that. So that's it. So first thing is to wire this switch in line. Uh, with the live and then extend the neutral then after that i need to extend the amiga side to go over the top i could actually go underneath here and go underneath and they'll come around and attach to these terminals so let me clean up the mess and then i'll just start soldering this stuff together Okay, so I've, I've reconnected all these wires, I've lengthened the ones that need lengthening, and I've inlined the power switch. And then this stuff just comes underneath the power supply like this. 
power supply sits in there, I'll wire these up to start with. Um, I actually doubled up the red, um, the five volts on the ground cable just to get a bit more current capacity out of these cables. So black is the ground. So I'm going off the colors that it said on the power supply, but I will check them afterwards. So that's ground. I'm going to put the shield in there as well. So the shield is yellow. So they'll both go in there. Whoop, stay in there. Five volts is red. Now I think Commodore did change the colors of these cables periodically. So don't trust any color that you see on any of their cables. White was minus 12, right? What is minus 12 on here? Uh, we've got V3 and plus V2. V3 is minus 12. Um, plus V2. This is, I've actually had to use a green cable because I didn't, it comes out as brown on the cable, but I've actually changed it to green. So that is the plus 12 volts and that should be V2. So that's the Amiga size connected up. So hopefully they fit. They'll just sit down there like that. Yep. Excellent. Now I've just got to connect up the mains part. So this is going to go in here. Let's get the live first. It's the important one, isn't it? So this is the United Kingdom and the live is quite often brown, but it's changed to black because it's gone through the switch. Uh, neutral is, gr is blue here, sorry. And then there's the earth. Hopefully this earth will fit this little earth terminal. Oh yeah. Oh, actually, this is a good point. Oh, is that switch gonna fit? I don't think the switch is gonna make it to where the switch needs to go. No, I'm gonna have to extend that as well. Extend the um, live, be able to fix that. Hopefully I can keep those cables out of the way, that screw that's going to go in there. Yeah, that fits there now. I think it just slots in there. Right. So hopefully this now goes back together. Like that. And no one will ever know the difference. It's actually holding it in quite well because that bit that I filed off inside is just holding the power supply in. So you'd never know that that isn't actually a real Amiga power supply, apart from the fact it's like a kilogram lighter now. I won't plug it into the Amiga first, I'm going to get the multimeter out and then I'm going to see if I have wired it up correctly. And I've just got my little diagram there to tell me what these voltages are supposed to be on this connector. I think it does actually print them on the back of the power supply. And I'm going to do a trick, I think, I don't know who told me this, or I think it was Jan Vita who did this first. Put a little bit of heat shrink over the ground there, just to stop me from accidentally shorting it with anything else. So this top left one here should be minus 12 volts. What have we got? Oh, it's not on. I was gonna say, it's nothing. Nothing exploded, that's a good sign. Oh, that, sorry, yeah, the top left there is plus 12 volts, that's right. So it's on 11.2. I don't know if that's a little low. Middle one is minus 12, getting minus 12. And this bottom one, is supposed to be, whoop, plus five volts. What am I getting? Oh, nearly shorted it then. 5.1. It's quite hard to probe these. Come on, you can do it. 5.1, so I, I'm happy with that. 5.1 is good. You can tweak that with a little pot in there, but I think, five, I'll, I think I'll stick with 5.1. Oh, and let's just check that the shield is grounded as well. Not that it matters too much, but let's just make sure we did it. That's not. That's not getting through to the ground there. So what have I done there? Let me make sure I unplug this before I touch it. What? Is it not connected at all? Is it only that pin that's connected? It should be the whole shield. Nope. What have I done wrong? I mean, it's not the end of the world, but why doesn't it work? Am I just not making good connection? Getting nothing. That's got to be connected in there. What's going on? I've definitely connected that though, because it, it's totally soldered in. I wonder if there's the shield, the shield might be broken. Might be broken in there somewhere. I mean, that's not the end of the world, because if the shield, shield isn't connected, then it's no big deal. I didn't test this before actually, so it's possible the shield cable has just never worked. But I've definitely made a good connection on it. It's just not, it's just not having it. 
So I can't leave it dangling though. I'll just put it back. I'll just put it back in the ground where it was. But the good news is it looks like this works. So this pot here, I think that's, I don't know what that's for tuning. Actually, I think that was right with the, I think the 12 volt rail being underpowered is what happens when it's not under load. You have to measure it under load. So I believe that's correct. So I'm happy with that. I'll just give it one more test and then I'm going to plug it in. So it's all back together. I'm going to have to assume that the shield isn't going to work. And let's just do one last test. 12 volt line is 11.2, but that's probably because it's not under load. Minus 12 volts is minus 12. And the five volt line is 5.1. So we'll keep it like that. Right, I'll just put the screws back in this and then we'll put it in a real Amiga. So here we go, I've got it plugged in and I'm gonna boot it up now. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna boot some uh, Rodland. I'm gonna I don't know if this disc works, but let's try it anyway. So here we go. Well, the power light's on. I don't smell anything. <laughs> version 1.3 oh okay here we go then I've not played this on the Amiga mom is taken atop the Maboots tower hey here we go well looks like the uh, power supply upgrade is working excellent um, so there we have it then oh this is Oh, what's this? Oh, I should have fired that the other way. Do you get a bonus for getting all the flowers? Yes, you do. Extra game, whatever that means. God, you're really slow in this game. Oh. Like a fire sword. So that is my uh, stealth. Uh, Amiga power supply upgrade and that's what I took out. I mean and it it works So there's nothing wrong with it. It's just starting to age a bit. So, you know, never quite too sure about it So that was a RT50 a meanwhile RT50B and I've put it inside a Commodore 312 power supply and it's holding quite nicely So, you know pretty good excellent